Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare two low-profile keyboards, the Logitech G915 TKL and the Red Dragon Horus TKL K621. These are two keyboards that look remarkably similar, as you see them side by side here, and yet they are quite different, at least in terms of price, if nothing else. The G915 TKL is the more expensive of the two, and a real premium keyboard. It's also my favourite, and has been a main keyboard for me for a long time. But now I've found the Red Dragon keyboard, and I thought it was interesting, so I want to be able to compare the two and talk about the differences. It's worth noting that both keyboards come in white and black variants, and I'll talk more about the differences between the G915 versions a bit later, Later on, but you can see the white versions sitting alongside each other here, and also get a look at the black version of the G915, which looks different but not as nice. And I did a video separately on why that's the case, mostly because the keycaps don't look as nice over time, and also because of the switch differences. I just prefer the white one, it's nicer to type on. I am going to do a separate versus video, which includes a typing test to compare the sounds of both these keyboards, and I'll also leave some of the clips for that at the end of this video. I will say the G915 wins in typing experience in my mind, but obviously that's a personal preference and will be very subjective. But it is worth bearing in mind that it is a nicer keyboard and a much more premium one. However, what you will see by the end of this video is that the Red Dragon is very interesting. Now the Logitech G915 TKL offers up both light speed and Bluetooth connectivity with a micro USB charging cable. It has a little 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that's stored on the underside and an extender that you can use to plug it into your PC and have easy access for charging purposes. One of the things that makes it interesting is that you can get out of 40 hours out of it with the RGB lighting turned on, but up to a thousand hours with the RGB turned off, that's 135 days is the claim. Now, that might sound insane, but what you do find is you're not plugging it in very often at all. I use mine all day long and into the evening, several days a week without any problems. The Red Dragon also offers both wireless and Bluetooth connection options, and it has a very similar setup as you'll see. It also has a 2.4 gigahertz dongle that's stored on the underside, and you're gonna notice a lot of similarities in terms of what's on offer here. I unfortunately can't talk about battery life with this keyboard though, because I found the wireless to be quite flaky with the Red Dragon Horus. I just didn't get a solid connection with the 2.4 gigahertz, unfortunately. And I did say in the review that I think this might be down to the sheer number of other devices that I have wirelessly connected. I use a wireless mouse, wireless headset, and other things, so there could be some interference. There are some other differences, though. It does have a USB-C cable for connectivity options instead of a micro USB, so there are some advantages there. Also, when I was using it in wireless mode, the battery did seem good. I just can't speak to the overall length of it. One of the oddities of this USB-C cable, though, is that it plugs in on the left-hand side. So the G915 plugs in at the top. The Red Dragon actually plugs in on the left here, top left by the escape key, which is a bit unusual, but it does mean potentially that you could buy a fancier detachable USB-C cable, perhaps with a coiled design and upgrade the look and feel of the keyboard, make it look a bit nicer. Now you have to excuse the flashing effect from the keycaps. The lighting actually doesn't do that in real life, but for some reason on the camera, it ends up looking a bit flashy. I don't understand why, and I couldn't fix it, so I apologize for that. But just bear in mind, it doesn't really look like that in the real world. Now inside the Red Dragon's box, you do get some extra switches that are included. These are low profile red switches, and I'll talk a bit more about lows later on, but there are linear switches with 40 grams of operating force and two mil actuation point. They are hot swappable though, which means that you can replace the switches on the entire keyboard. I did say, however, that it's not easy to find switches to swap them out, so that's worth bearing in mind. Now the G915 TKL comes in two different color variants, but the switches are also different on it as well. So you have a GL tactile, GL clicky, and GL linear. The black version uses the GL clicky switches and the tactile ones can be seen and heard on the white. Now I've done a video separately with just the sound test between these two if you're interested. I'll leave that linked in the description so you can hear the difference. My preference is definitely the white one. It's a bit quieter and a lot nicer in terms of typing experience. There are also kale switches worth bearing that in mind. And you can see the RGB lighting effects here as well. I find actually, surprisingly, that the RGB is brighter 
on the Red Dragon than it is on the G915 and it also shines much nicer from the surrounding areas so onto the back plate. You can see there are a number of lighting effects on the G915 TKL but also they are slightly marred especially on the black one it's not very easy to see them through the etching i also found that the black keycaps pick up a lot of finger oil over time so nowhere near as nice as the white ones i did a video recently after a year of using the g915 in white and it is much nicer it doesn't have this problem and also the lettering is much easier to see than you can see here on the black Again, I'll link to that video in the description so you can check that out. But you will notice the difference between them. And I was actually surprised by how much more striking the lighting is with the Red Dragon, which makes me think that the battery life won't hold up anywhere near as well. But you can see the lighting shining through here, through the keycaps really well. It reflects off the aluminium brushed aluminium finish backplate as well really well. You see you get a lot of RGB lighting. There's also 20 onboard lighting effects and you can change between them by pressing the function key and the insert button. That then lets you switch between those various effects and you can see that some of them are reactive to your key presses. You can also adjust the speed up and down with other key presses as well. So press the function and arrow keys and that will adjust the speed of them and switch between those. You can customize this in the software but the nice thing about the Red Dragon keyboard is it has a lot of customization options that are on board so it has onboard memory you can also see that it has uh, the ability to program macros with the g keys in the top left you have multiple buttons on one two three and four and five for switching between the various modes so you'll note that it has three bluetooth connectivity options and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless and usb connection so you can actually switch between those relative ease and you can obviously connect to different devices you'll also notice that if you press the function key and tab you can set the rgb lighting into a white mode and if you press the volume button on the top right you can then use the volume wheel to adjust the brightness up and down on the keyboard so you can really change the rgb lighting really easily on this keyboard and i was actually surprised by the number of different effects but also more importantly just the brightness it's really bright by comparison with the g915 Obviously, whether you care about the RGB lighting or not is going to be up to you. And obviously, also, as I said, you get more battery life out of the G915 without the lighting on than you do with it. Now, one of the things that struck me with these keyboards is the weight difference. So when I got the Red Dragon keyboard out of the box, I noticed immediately that it was quite light and it does feel as a little bit flimsy. Obviously, it's not as good quality as the G915. You'll see it's about 600 grams there and the G915 is 800, so it's quite a bit heavier. The difference here is obviously the internals are probably nicer on the G915. I'm not sure about the battery size and things like that. I haven't taken it apart, but it just feels a lot more premium, a lot better quality. But if you put the two side by side, you'll notice that they're very low profile. They sit at roughly the same height. They have a very nice setup in terms of the keycap design, the shape of the keycaps, the way the keyboard sits. Both are very comfortable to type on. I noted in my review that I found sometimes where I was using the Red Dragon, I actually forgot I wasn't using the G915 because it's that nice to type on in terms of the height and the overall comfort. And it's actually surprisingly good for the money. And that's the one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that the G915 is the best, but the Red Dragon is a fantastic offering for the amount of money you're paying. I think you get a lot of features in there for a very small amount of money by comparison. It's also very nice. It has ticks a lot of the boxes the G915 does in terms of comfort, usability, features, and other things. So it really surprised me just how good it is. And I think that's worth bearing in mind despite the complaints that I have. Now you can see some of the experience and talk about the switches in a bit more detail here. So obviously these have different switches in them. The G915 TKL does not have hot swappable switches, so you can't take the switches out and replace them. They are available in various variants and I'll leave all the specs in the description on there, but the black and white ones have either GL tactile or GL clicky. And you'll see when you take off the keycaps that they have multiple points where they're sitting in there. So the control key, for example, is stabilized. And you can also see a close up look at the switches. And you'll notice the lettering on here. These are kale switches and they do actuate faster. So both variants actuate at 1.5 mil, whereas the Red Dragon uses a two mil actuation. So these are actually quicker, which makes them nicer for gaming on. They're also a better quality, I think. And I found the overall experience is a bit better there's less wobble in the keycaps, but it is worth noting that the keycaps are going to be difficult to replace on both keyboards. 
because it's very difficult to find low profile keycaps from what I've seen. Correct me if I'm wrong or if you know of any in the comments. However, both switches and keycaps will be difficult to get. Obviously, you have the bonus of being able to replace the switches on the Red Dragon, but you couldn't do it with Kale switches, for example, because they have a different format in terms of the keycap design. And you'll notice that now as I show you the Red Dragon close up and how you remove the keycaps. So in the box of the Red Dragon keyboard, you get a keycap puller, basically hook this over the edges of the keycap and awkwardly pull those off just like I have. And then you get access to the underside and immediately you'll see the switch difference. They have a different setup. It uses that sort of classic Cherry MX style of cross hatch in the center. So the keycaps aren't quite as well stabilized. However, I didn't really notice a lot of extra play or wobble in them that made them horrible to type on. It's still a nice experience, pretty standard. And because they're so low profile, they do actuate at just two mil. So it's pretty decent actuation anyway. And they do let through a lot of light, as you can see from both the lettering and surrounding edges. So still a very nice setup indeed. And the fact that you have extras in the box is also a bonus, I think. For the amount of money you're paying, you get an extra switch. So if anything goes wrong or you wear out some of those switches over time, you have the option to replace. Admittedly, there's only a handful, so you can't replace the whole thing. But if you're using the WASD keys as an FPS gamer, for example, and you're a heavy user of those, and you just find over time they wear out, you have replacement options in the box. I did look and see you can get obviously other switches that is a possible but they are very expensive as a pack of 10 for ten dollars which is once you start adding up how many switches you need to replace the entire board it becomes very expensive but the fact that you have hot swappable switches and all these other features as well such as bluetooth wireless onboard memory and other things makes it a very interesting setup in terms of what's available and what's here Here's a close up look to compare the two and you'll see the keycap difference here side by side. Now, one thing of note, if you notice the smaller shift on the G number five, that's because that's a UK variant and that's the UK layout and the Red Dragon has the US layout. So that's the difference between those. But you'll just notice the stabilization is a little bit nicer. It has a much more premium feel to it on the G915, in my opinion, and also a very nice setup resilient and durable it's held up well over time my wife is still using the black version of this and i'm still using the white one and they're very very solid also little things make a big difference here so the volume wheel for example is really smooth on the g915 and nicer looking the one on the red dragon is kind of scratchy and not very good quality basically the red dragon looks like a copy of the g915 with a few elements that are a bit cheap and nasty but actually surprisingly good in multiple different ways because you have so many different things just packed into it in terms of features also you'll notice other things too they have the dedicated media playback buttons again same sort of rubberized effect as on the g915 so red dragon's taken a lot of what are the nice features on the logitech keyboard and basically copied them and thrown in some extra bits so as i said earlier for example if you notice the mute button is lit up white at the moment that means that you can also roll the volume wheel and adjust the brightness so the volume wheel on the Red Dragon keyboard is actually multifunctional in that it'll adjust both the volume and the brightness and you can roll it up and down like that. So it's interesting the way they've set it up. They've packed in a lot more for a lot less money, which is intriguing and very surprising. Now, if you look at the top left of both keyboards, you'll also spot some similarities there. You'll see that you have the ability to switch between the wireless connectivity, Bluetooth and other things on the Logitech keyboard. Also, there's a game mode button, so you can disable things like the Windows key when you're playing games. The Red Dragon keyboard has G keys, and those keys can be used to program macros on the fly. So with a few different key presses, you can set it into a recording mode where it will record macros, and then you can type in some macros, and you can set that up so those G keys can be used for macros. Also, the function 1 to 4 keys are for memory, so it has onboard memory for four different profiles that you can also switch between on the fly. The Logitech G915 has macro keys on F1, F2 and F3 and you do have other things that you do have G-Shift capabilities and other things that are in the software and I covered these sorts of things 
in the review so be sure to check out the description for that so all in all two very interesting keyboards for very different reasons and now i'm going to leave you with a sound test be sure to check out the links in the description and the specs this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching